The Russian S-300 air defense system that are delivered to Assad regime in Syria are now almost ready for operation. On February 5th, Israel's ImageSat International Company released satellite images of S-300 in Syria's Masyaf. In the images, three of the four launchers can be seen in an upright position and the fourth is seen covered by a camouflage net. This is the first time launchers are seen in an erect position and this points towards the system becoming operational very soon if it's not already. Viewers may note that reports from Russia had earlier stated that the S-300 system will become operational in March 2019 after Syrian S-300 crews would finish their training. It seems that the training program is being fast-tracked taking into account the volatile situation. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why Russia's S-300 getting operational in Syria will be a major challenge for Israeli Air Force. Let's get started. Israel Air Force has been able to neutralize Russian Pantsir S-1 without much problem. To know more, please check the video on the above card. But S-300 will be a different game. The S-300 is a series of Russian long-range air defense system produced by NPO Almaz. The S-300 system was first deployed by the Soviet Union in 1979. Since then, many variants of the system have been produced. The system is designed to protect important areas like military bases and administrative buildings against aerial threats like fighter jets, bomber aircraft, cruise missiles, and drones. S-300 is considered to be one of the most lethal operational air defense systems in the world. Many versions of the lethal system have been derived. Experts believe that Russia is most likely to be delivering the S-300 PMU-2 variant. There are five reasons to believe that S-300 will pose a strong challenge to Israeli Air Force. In past, we have seen this tactic being applied successfully when in April 1986, SR-71 Blackbird outran SA-2 surface-to-air missile over Libya. But in this case, the tactics will be useless since Israel's F-35 has a top speed of only Mach 1.6, whereas F-16s have a top speed of Mach 2 and missiles deployed by S-300 have much higher speeds some even being hypersonic. For example, 9M96 missile has a speed of Mach 2.9. The missiles deployed by S-300, like 9M96E1, are not only guided by the system but also have active radar homing ARH, capabilities. These missiles contain a radar transceiver and the electronics necessary for it to find and track its target autonomously on their own. So these missiles are guided to the target by radars of S-300 in the initial stage, but when they reach near, they can maneuver on their own. Hence there is no lag as they are not dependent on the transmission from ground radars. This makes the missiles very agile and hard to shrug off. Israel's F-16s are non-stealthy fighter and S-300 has multiple powerful radars operating in different bands. So S-300 is not expected to have any difficulty in detecting and targeting F-16 fighters. Israel's F-35s will be trump card here as it's a fifth generation stealthy aircraft. In December 2017, Israel declared that its first squadrons of F-35s is operational. It's a complex call if Israel will like to deploy its newest fighter in a risky environment like this or not, but even if it decides so, the situation will not be easy. 
F-35's airframe is not as stealthy as found in the F-22. Against X-band radars, it's only stealthy from the front and rear. Against S-band radar, it's stealthy from narrow front aspect. Against L-band radar, limited reduction is achieved from direct front. It's much greater reliance on radar absorbing materials. Overall, F-35 is much easier to detect when compared to F-22 Raptor. It also must be noted that wherever the weapon bays are opened, the stealth profile is greatly compromised. Apart from traditional radars, S-300 can be integrated with radars that are capable of detecting stealthy aircraft. It's not clear if Russia will provide Syrian system with that kind of advanced radar. During the raid on Pantsir S-1, Israel seems to have used electronic jamming. Israel's Air Force F-16 and especially F-35 have highly capable electronic warfare EW, suits that can initiate network attack and radar jamming to suppress enemy air defenses. But S-300 has many features specifically designed to overcome these countermeasures. For example, the powerful radar is resistant to jamming due to its ability to change frequency of its signals very rapidly. S-300 also can be equipped with Topaz Colchuga M, KRTP-91 Tamara and 85V6 Orion Vega emitter locating systems. These components are designed to engage emitting targets without emitting from the acquisition radars or if the acquisition radars have been jammed. So it will not be easy to disable S-300 with EW. Pantsir S-1 has a detection range of 36 kilometers, that's 22 miles, and a tracking range of 28 kilometers, or 17 miles, for a target with 2 meters squared, that's 22 square foot, RCS. Its missiles have a range of 20 kilometers, or 12 miles. Israel has several missiles that can be used from long range. Popeye and Delilah have a range of around 250 kilometers and can be launched from the air as well as sea, making them versatile. With these missiles, a standoff strike was feasible against Pantsir S-1. But successful standoff preemptive strike against S-300 is not an easy task to accomplish. The long-range surveillance radar tracks objects over a range of 300 kilometers and the missiles have a range of more than 250 kilometers. The engagement radar, which is responsible for guiding the missiles towards the target, is a very capable one. It can guide up to 12 missiles simultaneously, engaging up to six targets at once. Each launcher vehicle carries four missile containers. What makes matters more complex is that both Popeye and Delilah are subsonic and there's high probability of these being intercepted by S-300 before they can do any damage. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.